How long does it take to get a mix-ready rhythm section? Well, let's just see. There, it's ready. What we have here is bass and drums with compression, EQ, and effects ready to put into your mix. All you have to do is write, of course, the bass and drum parts. And it's all with free plugins in Reaper. I'll show you how, coming right up. I'm Keith from No Label, No Producer, No Limits.com. Let's dive right in. So if you want this rhythm section in your productions, it's pretty easy. There's just a couple of steps. First of all, watch the video through to the end so that you'll know how to tweak it to adapt it to your particular productions. Secondly, there's a link in the description that will take you to a web page which has downloads to all the plugins mentioned and this track template. So you can just open up this track template for yourself and have exactly the same mix I have going on here. So go to that web page, download all the plugins, they're all free, download the track template, put them all in Reaper, and you're ready to go. So what I'm using for plugins here is the Ample Bass P2 Lite for bass. And this is a paid plugin, but this is the free version, which is available. And for drums, we have the SSD5 from Stephen Slate. And this has three free kits available. For effects, we're using a combination of native Reaper plugins that come with the Reaper install and additional plugins which you can install through Repack. And if, again, you go to the link in the description, it will show you how to install these free plugins via Repack. So let's take a look at how to open the track template once you've installed it. Just right click here in the track control panel, templates, and you'll see bass and drum template. Click on it. And up it comes. If you've got all the plugins installed, as we talked about, you'll be ready to go. This MIDI pattern is where you edit your bass part, and this MIDI pattern is where you edit your drum part. Okay, let's take a look at how to tweak the sounds to your liking. Let's take a look at what we have going on here. We have a bass master with a couple of different channels, and we have a drum master with all of our drums routed out to individual outputs. On the bass master, I have an EQ rolling off the low lows a little bit, the LA Toucan compressor, LA Toucan style compressor, and then a multiband compressor. Right here, I'm just taking down the low lows a little bit and then compressing everything else. And I've got this range boosted here to get a little bit of dirtiness in there. Now there's two channels. One here is essentially the Ample Bass P2 Lite channel. It's got a sub with some of the low end pushed and then an EQ with some other low end points pushed a little bit. So I'm using this channel largely to get the low end sound. I'll give you a taste here. It's got a nice full low sound. And then over here on the other channel, I have the bass professor. And I'm using this to get some dirt and a little bit of, you know, sort of fuzz in there. So you can use the combination of these two sounds to get what you want. If you like the dirt, if you like the bass to cut through, you can boost the bass professor channel. The more solid low end is in the bass DI channel. And then of course you might have to take a look at your LA Toucan and see if it's compressing at about the right amount. So that's the bass. Dial in the sound by changing the balance between these two channels. And I just left a little MIDI pattern in here to, so that you can know where to edit. You can, of course, put your own bass notes in here. Now here on the drum track, I have a drum master with all the drums individually routed to outputs. And on the master, I have recomp set up for parallel compression. So if you like the parallel compression sound, if you like the compressed sound, the processed sound, push up the wet, if you like the drier sound, you can push up the dry. So you can control the amount of parallel compression by these two faders right here on the right side. A 
uh, you can see how easy that is to control here. We have a drum reverb using the, the Lexican 2 PCX, and then I have the lows and the highs EQ'd out and a little push here in the high end. You can change the length of the reverb time right here with this length control. So make that appropriate to your song, and of course you could change any of the other parameters as well. For the kick drum, there's a kick in and a kick out mic. I'm not using the kick out, but on the kick in, I have an EQ set up. For the snare here, we have a snare direct. I like the sound of it. It's kind of uh, has some high end in it. And I have the snare top mic. That has some EQ on it to bring out the highs and take out a little bit of ring there. Snare bottom mic, which is just sort of used for this attack and presence. And you can change the sound of the snare radically by changing the balance between these three channels right here. So that is the snare sound right there. I don't use the snare ring channel, but it's there for you should you decide to use it. On the snare master, I have the Event Horizon Clipper, just taking a little bit of those transients down. You can see the difference between the input meter and the output meter here. Output clips off there at 6 dB minus 6 dB, but the input goes higher. Tom Master has some compression on it. Just a slight bit of compression here. Just to keep those toms dynamically consistent and an EQ, which is just rolling off the real low end. Each of these toms has EQ on it. And looking for that uh, resonance, that sort of fundamental sound of the tom and some stick slap and then taking out some stuff in the low mids. Each of the toms has an EQ on it and they're balanced into this tom master. Then we have the hi-hat which has some EQ on it. There's a ride symbol. I don't have any ride in this pattern right here but it's pretty well balanced out with a hi-hat sound. The overhead microphones don't have any processing on them. But the room does, I have some bus compression going on just to bring out the sustain on the snare decay a little bit. Take a listen. Change your drum sound by changing the balance between the overhead and the rooms and the balance between these two sets of microphones and the close mics. So for a, a liver drum sound, you would come up maybe with the room mic more than anything else. So of course, all these microphones sum up at the Drum Master. Uh, I'm not using Room B, but it's here. It's routed for you in case you want to use it. That comes with the SSD5 kits. Now, in terms of the kits themselves, you access them here at this Drum MIDI channel. And there are three kits available, and you can choose between them. I'm just on the Deluxe 2 Free Dry and Tight. These are the three free kits. I tend to like the Hugo kit. If you double click on it, it loads up. But of course, choose whichever one you like. 
The SSD5 also has some grooves in it, so you can take any of these patterns that are here that come with the free version and drag them into your project and they'll be there for you. Here's some jazz. If you want to get good quality home recordings, a mentorship is the fastest way to build your skills. You're going to save oodles of time and get rid of tons of frustration if you are properly mentored. I have a mentorship program called, well, it's called the Home Recording Mentorship Program. There's a link in the description. Check it out. So if you call up this template, you'll have bass guitar and drums reasonably well mixed, and you can adjust them in the ways that I've just talked about. If you found this information valuable, it makes sense to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And of course, check out my mentorship program in the link below the video. I'm Keith from No Label, No Producer, No Limits.com. Bye for now. See you soon.